My grandfather was obsessed with this case. Greg Graven grew up surrounded by the Martin case. His grandfather, Walter Graven, was a Multnomah County detective. His family saved his grandfather's case notes, and they clearly show Detective Graven was convinced of one thing. He believes that it was a homicide and that it would be solved when that vehicle is located. The Martin Family. On December 7, 1958, Kenneth and Barbara Martin from Portland, Oregon, together with their three children, Barbara, Susan, and Virginia, set off for an innocent day trip to the Columbia River Gorge. The family, known for their warm smiles and neighborly manners, embarked on a journey to collect Christmas greenery. However, as the day turned into night, the Martin family failed to return, marking the beginning of a mystery that would remain unsolved for decades. Before we proceed further, don't forget to subscribe to the Criminology Connection. Let's get back to the video. The Martin family resided in Portland, Oregon, a bustling city known for its diverse culture and stunning natural scenery. Kenneth Martin, the family patriarch, was an esteemed accountant with a reputation for his meticulous nature and unwavering integrity. His wife, Barbara Martin, was a devoted homemaker, known in their community for her nurturing spirit and the warm and welcoming atmosphere she created in their home. Their three children, Barbara, aged 14, Susan, aged 13, and Virginia, aged 11, were a testament to their parents' dedication. Known for their good manners and polite demeanor, the girls were well-liked in their school and community. The family was deeply involved in their local church, their faith being a cornerstone of their lives. Their home was a typical mid-century American household, filled with laughter, love, and the hustle and bustle of a family of five. Christmas was a particularly special time for the Martins, a time of year when the family embraced the spirit of the season, adorning their house with decorations and partaking in community events. December 7, 1958 was intended to be a day steeped in this tradition. A family day trip to the Columbia River Gorge to collect greenery for their Christmas decorations. The Gorge, a canyon of the Columbia River, was a place the family had visited numerous times, attracted by its picturesque beauty and abundant plant life. Dressed warmly against the winter chill, the family set off in high spirits in their red and white 1954 Ford station wagon, waving to their neighbors as they left. They had no way of knowing that this day, which had started with such normalcy and joy, would spiral into a mystery that would baffle investigators for decades. Now, you might be wondering, what's the purpose behind sharing these chilling tales? This video of mysterious disappearances where people vanished without a trace is more than a mere recounting of historical events. It's a call to action for us all to be more vigilant about our surroundings and the well-being of our loved ones. The stories remind us of the often underestimated dangers that might lurk even in the seemingly safest environments. As night fell on December 7, 1958, the lights in the Martin household remained off, the cheerful noise that usually permeated their home ominously absent. Their neighbors, accustomed to the family's predictable routines, found the silence disconcerting. When the family's absence extended into the next day, concern rippled through their community. The situation took a more distressing turn when the Martins did not show up for Sunday services at their local church, a commitment they rarely missed. By now, worry had turned into dread, prompting local law enforcement to initiate a search operation. The initial focus of the investigation was the Columbia River Gorge, the family's intended destination for their day trip. Local police, the sheriff's department, and a surge of volunteers combed the vast expanse of the gorge, navigating its treacherous terrain in search of any signs of the family or their vehicle. Yet, despite the extensive efforts, the search yielded no clues, deepening the mystery and the collective anxiety of the community. Weeks turned into months, with the winter giving way to spring yet there was no trace of the Martin family. In May 1959, a horrifying discovery broke the agonizing wait. A river patrol found the Martin family station wagon submerged in the Columbia River, the cheerful red and white exterior now a dull, eerie shadow under the water. There were no bodies in the vehicle, just an assortment of items that bore silent testament to the family's fate. Tires and rims, a woman's handbag, a wallet, and a few other miscellaneous items. But what was even more perplexing was the extensive damage to the vehicle, suggestive of a violent plunge off a cliff. The discovery of the car gave investigators their first tangible evidence, but it also added a new layer of complexity to the case. 
the location and condition of the car seemed to suggest an accident. Yet there were aspects that didn't quite fit this theory. In the following weeks, a heartbreaking discovery was made when the bodies of Susan and Virginia Martin were found downstream. However, the bodies of Kenneth, Barbara, and Barbara, the eldest daughter, were never found, deepening the enigma of the family's disappearance. As years turned into decades, the investigation into the Martins' family disappearance cycled through periods of intense activity and frustrating stagnation. Despite the best efforts of investigators and the passage of time, the case remains stubbornly unresolved, leaving behind a legacy of unanswered questions and a cloud of sorrow over a family that simply vanished one seemingly ordinary December day. Over time, various theories were put forth. Some speculated that the family might have been the victims of a car accident, a tragic plunge off a cliff into the river. Others suspected a more sinister scenario, with theories ranging from a robbery gone wrong to the family being targeted by a criminal entity. However, no theory could ever be substantiated with sufficient evidence, and the question of what happened to the Martin family that December day remains unanswered. The Martin family disappearance is one of the most haunting unsolved mysteries in American history. It has influenced countless crime novels, documentaries, and films, each one attempting to unravel the chilling mystery. The case has been a significant catalyst for the development of new investigative techniques, as well as improvements in search and rescue operations. Despite the passage of time, the story of the Martin family continues to captivate the public imagination. The unresolved case serves as a chilling reminder of life's fragility and the enduring mystery surrounding the fate of this ordinary American family. Um, so even when Beers wasn't in the thick of the battle, although he often was, particularly in the early years, um, he was observing some of the most terrific scenes imaginable. Ambrose Beers. Ambrose Beers, the renowned American journalist, short story writer, and satirist of the late 19th and early 20th century, is perhaps most famously known for his mysterious disappearance at the age of 71. His life, literary works, and perplexing disappearance have since intrigued generations, making him a figure of enduring fascination. Born on June 24, 1842, in Ohio, Ambrose Bierce led a life as striking as his mysterious disappearance. He was one of 13 children, all of whom were given names beginning with the letter A by their book-loving father. This love for literature, instilled by his father, would become the cornerstone of Bierce's life. Bierce's early life was marked by his service in the Union Army during the American Civil War. The experiences he gained and horrors he witnessed during the war profoundly influenced his later works, culminating in his most acclaimed collection, Tales of Soldiers and Civilians. After the war, Beer settled in San Francisco and commenced a successful career as a journalist. His biting wit and cynical disposition earned him the nickname Bitter Beers. Despite his acerbic nature, his literary skills were undeniable, and he soon gained prominence as a columnist and editor. In 1913, at the age of 71, Beers embarked on a tour to visit Civil War battlefields. He continued south into Mexico, which was in the throes of revolution. Beers, always drawn to the prospect of adventure and change, seemed to relish the chance to witness history in the making. He sent letters to his secretary and daughter, his correspondence filled with enthusiasm and insight about his experiences. The last known letter from Beers was dated December 26, 1913, sent from Chihuahua, Mexico. After that, he vanished without a trace. His disappearance sparked an exhaustive but ultimately futile search. Beers had stepped into the fog of the Mexican Revolution and was never seen or heard from again. Theories about Beers' fate are as numerous as they are varied. Some suggest he was killed in the Battle of Ohinaga in January 1914, while others speculate he committed suicide, a fate he had often contemplated in his works. Some even claim he lived out his days under an assumed name elsewhere. However, without concrete evidence, these theories remain speculative. Bierce's mysterious disappearance only served to enhance his literary reputation, casting a shadow of intrigue over his already impressive body of work. His short stories, most notably an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, remain staples in American literature classes. His satirical lexicon, The Devil's Dictionary, 
continues to entertain readers with its biting wit and cynicism. The strange circumstances of Beerus' disappearance have made him a popular figure in popular culture, featuring in numerous works of fiction, including novels, films, and television series. His life, works, and mysterious end continue to captivate literary scholars and mystery enthusiasts alike, ensuring his enduring place in American literary history and lore. Paula Jean Weldon The mysterious disappearance of Paula Jean Weldon, a 19-year-old college student, has intrigued and baffled investigators for over seven decades. Her sudden and unexplained disappearance from Vermont's Bennington College in 1946 sparked one of the most extensive missing person searches in Vermont history. Born in 1928, Paula Jean Weldon was a sophomore at Bennington College in Vermont where she was studying to become an artist. Known for her vivacious spirit and friendly demeanor, she was an active member of her college community. Originally from Stamford, Connecticut, Weldon had fallen in love with the natural beauty of Vermont, often embarking on solo hikes around the local area. On December 1, 1946, Weldon finished her shift at the college dining hall and returned to her room, telling her roommate she was going for a long walk but failing to specify a destination. She left the campus, hitching a ride to the long trail near Glastonbury Mountain. Several people reported seeing Weldon that afternoon, including a gas station attendant who gave her directions and an elderly couple who spotted her on the trail. However, as night fell and a harsh winter chill set in, Weldon did not return. The following morning, when Weldon's absence from her classes was noted, the alarm was raised. What followed was an extensive search involving local police, the sheriff's department, volunteers, and even the FBI. Despite these efforts, no trace of Weldon was found. Theories about Weldon's fate are as numerous as they are speculative. Some suggested she had gotten lost or succumbed to the elements, while others suspected foul play. There was speculation about Weldon starting a new life elsewhere, fueled by the discovery that she had withdrawn her savings from the bank shortly before her disappearance. Despite these theories, no definite evidence has been found to substantiate any of them. Paula Jean Weldon's disappearance remains one of Vermont's most enduring mysteries and a significant part of the folklore surrounding the Bennington Triangle, an area reputed for mysterious disappearances. Her case, led to the establishment of the Vermont State Police, as her disappearance highlighted the lack of a coordinated state-level law enforcement agency. Weldon's case has been the subject of numerous books, documentaries, and podcasts. It continues to fascinate crime enthusiasts and has been influential in highlighting the importance of rapid response and organized search efforts in missing person cases. In light of the information presented in this script, we'd like to ask you, our viewers, what do you believe happened to these people? Do you lean towards more practical explanations or do you entertain more extraordinary theories? We welcome you to share your thoughts and theories in the comments below. After all, one of the fascinating aspects of such mysteries is the discussion they provoke, as everyone tries to piece together the puzzle with the information at hand. We're looking forward to hearing your unique perspectives. And as we conclude this exploration into some of history's most mysterious disappearances, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this journey. Until next time, stay safe, stay curious, and keep exploring the mysteries that history has left us.